track. Um, they tried to make a, a classy product by putting it in, in plate wood, and then the remote control is a piece of crappy plastic. So I want to redesign that with a piece of wood. But I haven't done that yet because I was too busy making uh, this installation. So that's the projection you've seen in the, in the corridor here. So I, I used it as a vehicle to experiment with different ways of interacting and making mappings between our movements and, in this case, video. Uh, I've got a faint white slide. Um, that's my wife saying, that's cool. And that was the first time that she liked what I was doing. <laughs> She's a curator. And she hates electronic media. So for her to be um, engaging with this, I thought, I'm on the right track. <laughs> yeah, this, is, uh, this was part of a, a live festival in Sydney. And that is all for, for three weeks in, in the university. And uh, observed how people interacted with it and played with it. What I, what I like about this is that it's, that it's not me making the patterns, but uh, I have no imagination to do that on that just in my industry. I want to create um, a facilitate for other people to make their patterns. So what I should do with the next person is that you can create a pattern and then take it home, put it on the wall, and pay for it. That'd be good. <laughs> Quite difficult. <coughs> so we had um, sensors in those seats, and they were analog sensors. So you move around on the seats or fall asleep. Some people did that too, and that would influence the, the projection. Um, and the two square blocks are accelerometers, so they measure the tilt, mainly. And the round thing is a camera, which um, is a very good way. Well, children like it because they can put themselves in. And you can do very good video feedback. <coughs> if you have questions, do you ask? Well, back then, um, I also saw that there were other videos uh, between them. Ah, Is yes. it triggered by some sort of uh, staticness of the camera or something? Yeah, yeah. So the camera acts as a sensor. When the camera doesn't uh, see anything changing, so meaning there's no one interacting with it, it crossfades to pre-recorded videos. So there's a whole bank of about 80 videos in there of mainly underwater footage, uh, which is maybe because I like to dive, but um, and I have an underwater camera. But I'm very fascinated by the movements of stuff underwater. It's very alienating. Well, for a Dutchman, because if you go on the water, you hold it. Yeah. <laughs> it's as grey as a winter day. Um, also, by using gauze, I've had the same effect of being able to see through. It doesn't come out in the video very well, but the way your um, actual visual perception works is that you can choose when you look at it. It's the figure ground thing. But you can choose to focus on the images that are projected, or you can and focus on the, the things behind it. So I was trying to blend. And because the, that's very important, I think, not to just create a square and that's where it all happens, this is what I'm doing, but try to engage with the context. Um, my aim was actually to try and make this size <coughs> to engage with that, with that building. And this building needs a lot of engagement. It's very famous in Sydney for being about the ugliest building, and that's the UPS main building. I promised Dieter to, to put this slide back in. This, this was a, uh, a prototype that we made at uh, uh, the iWeb of the TU Delft Architecture Department Hyperbody Research Group of Casa Oosterhout, and they had five screens. So with the help of Dieter, we made a kaleidoscope on five screens and controlled by one uh, sensor, wireless sensor with three gyroscopes and an accelerometer and a um, 
More recently, I took the same thing and put it through the roof. And here's some video of that. The Bauhaus is a museum in Sydney for design, technology, and science. And during the Sydney design event, they asked me to. Platform or blow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this gave me an opportunity to um, map a recircle to one set of sensors. So the, um, there's more clarity in the interaction uh, for those who can look out. The next time we will put lots of cushions on the floor and people just play and then play with But again, I try to engage with the aspects of scale the building. Um, these are the sensors, so we used the same blocks, and instead of the seats we had a board that you could stand on and manipulate an image, and a jacket. This was for me, <coughs> oh, there was a DJ who played kind of that music. Um, for me this was making the circle round in a way by uh, coming back to a wearable interface. It was uh, designed by a fashion designer who graduated from our faculty. And all the wiring and programming was done by uh, someone else, because I didn't have the time to do it myself. But you can see people uh, seem to like it. So all it is is one uh, accelerometer on the cut, connected to an Arduino that translates it into that are then transmitted through a zip And also when you put the hood on, the lights come on. And and then afterwards you paint the one on the floor. And that's very nice to hang around. So this is the pool. Okay, music project. <laughs> this is a project that we do for the, um, a research center in Brisbane that develops music software called jam to jam Anyone familiar with that? Or maybe, maybe, maybe they're your friends, so I shouldn't say it's a bit of math, but it is a bit math. And, um, they decided to put all the interaction through the mouse, so you, you can change the musical parameters one thing at a time. Imagine playing tennis like that. Um, so that's not so effective. What it, what it has, it has four uh, instruments in it, bass, guitar, drums, and um, keyboards, as it were. And they're algorithmic um, musical structures which are then influenced with sensors. So it's a great concept to actually add lots of sensors to rather than pick <coughs> This is one of the things, and uh, my friend Jos playing it in a concert uh, with a proximity sensor, and actually showing that you can do a performance with, with, this, with this instrument. And we use it um, as a way of developing all sorts of different interaction um, bits. And Elements. Um, then there's another thing that you really have to have long hair for that's taking the video for a walk. I have a phrase of taking the line for a walk. Um, this is something that I've been doing for quite a while. Is I felt it was necessary to liberate the projector, you know, it's always stuck. Especially a number of years ago, you would not get your hands on it and play with it. But I think you can treat it as an instrument. So, here's some reason. It's a fun, but actually, it started in 2003 on the Costa Brava, I think it's a beach. <laughs> and um, it's a bit of a uh, hassle because you have to carry a, a battery, which is about 12 kilos in the backpack and the power converter and generally I have a good speaker in there as well and a computer 
and a controller computer it sensors that are stuck on the projector. So it's all self-contained. And um, it's a bit like in the old days, you have some of the big problem. Uh, it feels like that. It adds, adds up to 20 kilos in the end. But it's worth it. It feels like a liberation to be just not. I know uh, uh, more wires is good, but. So, this is me, uh, guerrilla style, uh, taking someone else's lecture over. I was asked to do that, but he didn't know I was coming <coughs> with my projection. And this is, um, <coughs> well, as part of, this is an architecture event, Chachacucha, that happens around the world. And I did a little walk. I've been listening to the responses later and you get all sorts of things like and it ranges from cool to what are you doing? <laughs> and I suppose it's it's both. Uh, it's actually quite good fun because you can uh, infiltrate in people's living rooms. Um, you know, imagine there's, there's nothing on telly, and someone walks around the disc. <laughs> so can just... Well, before we hear more embarrassing comments, uh, this is the setup. The, there's space for a uh, general speaker. Um, I did a more planned walk because the others were a bit more like a Devi, you just wander aimlessly through the city and see what you what you encounter. But I was asked to do one in a conference called Scene, which was for bringing together architecture, dance, and cinema. Some people think that they are very different things. So I thought this type of performance would bring it all together. So I went um, uh, from this place here, circled around it, and then went through the park all the way up, projecting on buildings on the way, and then jumping into the um, into the into the bay. So I prepared a bank of images and practiced a couple of times to reflect to the, to the environment. Respond or contrast, there were different principles. And I haven't edited the video already, so I'm not going to show you. But I brought uh, the sensors and some stuff, so after my talk, you can try it for yourself with the projector here. If you buy new beer. Um, I, I found it actually quite uh, intimidating and, and scary. Well, first of all, if you walk around with the projector, you notice how, how powerful it is. It is really a big beam of light. And um, it's not damaging, but it's, it can be screaming. Um, but also, the, taking that, that whole idea of liberating. That's all very well, but you you have to then frame your image. So you're walking around searching for places where you can put the image. And when that fits, when that works, that's a, there's a sense of relief that ah, I've got my frame now. So, but it's sort of, I still think it's very nice. It's also um, a comment on, you know, how we, we all take, everyone in this room has a camera for you that you didn't ask for, but the phone companies give it to you. So we go around and we take lots of pictures. This is a nice example of the Guardians, the Guardian of last week. Um, so you could argue that by taking away all the time from your environment, maybe it's time to give back. And we start to do that with our uh, big screens on our devices. Look what I've done last night, or maybe you didn't want to know. Um, I think the next step is that we're going to project 
get small predictors or get bigger ones like, like these. And rather than this just happening and being pushed by the technology and people will just try to adapt to it, maybe we should um, research beforehand <coughs> what it is to be having the ability to output. Oh, yeah, that was fun. On the way home one night, I had my whole kit, and I was on the ferry. And the ferry went past the uh, um, opera house. So I tried to do a brownie you know, and project in the opera house, and that didn't work. But I could put it on the way. So this is not CGI. This is real. The images of stained glass window in the museum in Melbourne. Um, now this is the next project. When I come back, I have to. Um, have, I won't have time to sleep because this wall is waiting for me. There's a laneway project in Sydney where they try to. Um, uh, that was a vehicle blur. Uh, to do something with all the dodgy laneways in the central business district. And what do you do when you want to make things more interesting? Bring an artist. Don't give them any money. Luckily, I've got a full-time job, so I can just do this and I call it research, and that's fine. Um, uh, the reason why I agree to it, because how can you refuse a wall like that? It's so tall. So I made something that, um, and that's what I can demonstrate here, that when you tilt, the image zooms at the same time. So what I want to do here is give this projector to the audience, and they can just play with it. Um, these are, of course, uh, videos of uh, graffiti. So it's also sort of um, Kingston graffiti for people like me who are not brave enough and get go out there and get arrested. Although I sometimes wonder what happens when you project onto buildings and people on the other side of the wall might not agree that you're doing doing that. And maybe that depends on the content. So as long as it's just art, it's fine. But maybe if it's political slogans or a hardcore porn, maybe you will get arrested. I don't think there's leg legislation for that yet. Um, and finally, a plug. All come to Sydney in June. It's not the best time of year to be there, but it's, it's winter. But Sydney winters are a joke. There, there wouldn't even be autumn here. So, but no fear, you can come to Sydney. Um, and there's a plus plus again. There's the conference on musical interfaces. Uh, this year we host it, and it's my aim to broaden it because I think expression is too important to just leave it to the musicians. I think it's important for interface design in general. So that's what we aim with this um, with this conference. And um, we have already two keynote speakers. One is Dr. Stellar, who also will bring his last project. Um, and I, I think that, um, well, whether you like his work or not, but it's a very profound comment, I think, on where the interface sits between us and the technology. What if it blurs <coughs> as you become cyborgs? And our other keynote speaker is Nick Collins. Um, I think it's the, the sort of uh, three Michelin star cook of hacking. And we need that, I think, in our world because there's so much hacking going on that's just making things work. And for someone like Nick to just make beautiful objects and know what he's doing. Um, very happy with that. Then I have some secret projects that I might want to show that. Everybody in here. We'll get you a beer. Okay, we'll get you a beer. <laughs> okay, this is very speculative. What I'm working on is um, that's the nice thing of moving to another country. You see weird things. So, one of the things is that um, on the roads, 
in, in the areas where the so-called bogans live, or the hooms, they go out with their cars and they burn rubber. No one, the Holland is too tame to, to, there's no room for that, but in the study there's room. So I was very fascinated by those curves on the road. Some they go, they make just beautiful patterns. And I don't think that they do that on purpose, but um, it happens. I haven't seen them do it. So I've been filming them, and I want to translate them into sound. And for those of you familiar with John Cage's piece, The Orangi, this is sort of a, a, well, a wild version of The Orangi. Um, following those lines, so I have a fabulous space, and I, I use a slide and um, an Evo to create the, the sound that I think goes with, uh, with it. I first thought of flamingo, but I'm, I'm not very good at me. <laughs> and another secret project, uh, which is not that secret anymore, because it will be uh, in a gallery in Sydney in, in May. Is another fascination. This is serious. It's everywhere. This is builders going to do something to the road, and they indicate where where things are. So it's on one hand it's interesting because it reveals all the hidden infrastructure of the city, which which I call an electronic ecology, and to make that visible, they actually just doing something good. It's also sort of vandalism. It, it, this is graffiti, you know, and, but it's legal. They can just do it. They can just go out there. So I think someone more radical than me would probably go out with a, with, to do this, but then write uh, subtle slogans, disguised as building graffiti, and get away with it. Um, very powerful. It's also been um, with plastic surgery sometimes to mark out there. And that's just the name of my studio. Um, I call it interactivation because interaction doesn't mean anything anymore because everyone uses it for whatever they think um, interaction is. So I call it interactivation. I call it interactivism then. Because I like this idea of being, being active or being even a, an activist. Um, I hope I got that across. Thank you very much. That's a, that's a rule. <laughs> so actually, we have a four analogs button that uh, we can hack, and we are going to connect it to, to the other piece, to the ambisonic cube. So we are still choosing which are the nice forces to use for, in the, for the interaction design. And I'm quite happy that the electrodes are uh, working. It will work because I, I really have to design the interaction in terms of what I feel and try to dis, uh, interpret this feeling as something that is happening somewhere else but connected to me. So it's a very nice way of making interaction for me. It's completely new. That at least I really like it. Yes, and also grows in time, which I like. For example, now I'm having the. You can see it here when it's all continuous. It's all a pulse, quite strong. So it's now we are in three, four seconds pulse strong. So now I'm on high frequency. Is the piece though about how much you can withstand with the pain? It has a lot in it actually. It has also to do with it. Because it's all about borders. Inside the cabin there is the girl which also has borders. I mean, you know, we can think that 
the threshold is around one hour and something. But you know, we keep uh, a state, physical and mind state, to to stand till we can, right? Then there is me outside, another threshold, and then there is the visitor, which has a particular physical, actually is mental threshold because. I put him in a situation which uh, needs to face inside the cube with the naked girl, and at the same time, he knows that something is happening to me. So that's a kind of, you know, as soon as they feel free, I think they will think about uh, something, and then, uh, so. The viewer themselves can also understand what they're doing. Yes. So it's it's a uh, it's not and is so linear that cannot be confusing, but for sure has a, a moment of reflection about what is happening. And uh, at, at the end, is uh, the visitor is completely used because you know I I said already that this piece comes from a sort of frustration to me how people in, in understand interactive art, and this time I use the visitor. They don't use my piece. So actually, at the end, is the visitor the one that has a less or more confused experience, and is providing to us a lot of pleasure, right? So that's uh, if I reach this point, then I got the piece. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> Oof. You see? <laughs> the muscle? <Ooh. laughs> Oof. That was a strong one. Because actually these are... Um, they are made in time and you have to... At the beginning, everything is very slow, but then suddenly there is a something. So to now to really uh, understand how the pulses are done in a low and high frequency, this is going to take a bit of time to know how we can module what we really want as a pulses, because that's the output that we are having. A kind of physical patterns that I can feel just myself, so it's a very selfish experience, this one. Eh? It's a very selfish experience. <laughs> Vivian, there is not much to see today because this is a bit what uh, we are doing uh, now, but uh, later on, I mean, we will, because uh, we start to work on this just uh, today is Friday, so on Wednesday. So now the idea is, uh, let's say that the shape of electrodes are uh, chosen. Then we start to open this and see, it's good because every switch is grounded, so there is a lot of possibility to do what we like to do. And um, and then we start to build the final, uh, also to understand where to place the electrodes. How many do you want? I think I might have a four on each. I have a two of this, four of each, so it's eight. This is a bit, uh, now I need a bit of time to research still, if I want it also on my chest. <laughs> yeah, the initial ideas were, idea was to have it on my chest, but uh, then I'm kind of uh, changing. Also because these uh, wires, they need to be very in contact to the skin to be able to deliver the pulses. So... Does it hurt when you, when you wrap it on it, the metal? Like ah, no, curtain? no, no. It's a, I choose a, a very nice one that doesn't... Uh, the first experiment, yes, I burned a bit. 
but don't say to taco. <laughs> okay, wait, what happened? What you were saying? Last night you were saying that taco made a... Stop. <laughs> <laughs> he was worried about your health. No, uh, something happened here at this time for security reasons, but I think it was, uh, it was because, um, you know, suddenly we have been speaking about high voltage, we have been speaking about uh, building a circuit bo board, which for me was fine, but June uh, pointed out uh, really about medical issues, that you don't know what you can provoke, that you can damage cells uh, with the time, and uh, so we had a meeting all together, and I said that uh, I, I will... I'm very quiet in using a device like this, which is safe. I need to hack it. I mean, I cannot use what it is because I need to do what I want. But if this tool is, providi uh, is providing a guarantee to be safe in terms of pulls on my nerves, I can uh, do a lot with it uh, and everybody's happy. Uh, Tago wants... Uh, that uh, we are uh, battery powered and uh, that uh, we work on wireless. For the battery powered, we agreed, but uh, wireless, uh, no, it's because we are, um, look, this is our system. Oh, no. This is, um, where is this? There. So I cannot put such interface <coughs> on wireless with such a system behind. Oof. It's just too much. Beside the own system, my own system, I, I'm going to show in places where, you know, Bluetooth, uh, you know, you, you cannot rely on wireless. And because this is an electric pulse interface, I just want to be sure that I have on off. That's uh, so basically your original plan was to create your own shocking device. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, June and Taku were worried that you might really hurt yourself. Yeah, yeah. And I agree. I mean, I I completely understand the the, the concern. And my piece is not about that. Okay. So I I don't want to. You know, if I have to build, a, in this case it will be stock, to build a circuit which uh, uh, without uh, knowledge can have, uh, you know, can create some trouble, I don't mind. For me the most important is to have the physical experience that I need and uh, that is uh, providing in the audience the atmosphere of me being full of pulses just as they move. Right. Right? So it, was, it wasn't part of the piece itself, this kind of self? No, it, this is not a masochistic piece. <laughs> I'm Marina Hamovich Tat. No, no, no. Do with me what you will. No, 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 no. Okay. No, it was not. Of course, uh, uh, I mean, the idea was that I will feel pain, right? Uh, now I don't feel pain. Now I don't feel pain. And I think that after I will be testing this for two weeks, I will feel so comfortable with it that I'm going to have a pleasure. But actually, the threshold of an artist in this condition is about pain and pleasure. And because uh, what I'm feeling now is going to be connected to my own peace, I think uh, my selfish condition at that time will be completely of pleasure, while people can think that I have pain. Because logically, I'm having pain, right? But I don't perceive it like this. So that's also another switch that I like also, to... Yeah, you can train your mind to yes. interpret this into pleasure. Yes. But, so Maybe in this is masochist. <laughs> <laughs> but does this set you guys back at all? Like, was this like a huge obstacle that you had to face with the, from the switch from your electric shock machine into this? Uh, the difficult part was finding one of these medical devices that is, would be easy to hack. Because these devices are all made for the person to operate with buttons. 
and we don't want a person to operate it, we want it to be operated from a computer program. So we have to interface this thing to a computer program that's already being developed. And then the key was finding the correct type of device that is easy to connect somehow with an intermediate circuit to a computer. And um, we, f we got lucky, we found one that is, uh, has many buttons. Because more buttons is better. All the sophisticated ones that are more expensive have a huge display and four buttons. And then the function of each of those four buttons depends on what the display is saying at the time. And you have these menu structures and stuff. This is very difficult to deal with. And for this device, the function of each button <coughs> is just dependent on the button or at best uh, how many times you press a button. But the button always does the same thing. It doesn't change because there is no menu structure or anything. So this device being relatively simple helps. We got lucky that we found that one. Oh yeah, two of them actually. Have you opened it up yet? Yeah, I opened it up yesterday. Uh, no, when was I here? Wednesday. And uh, I had a look inside, and I think that it's it's hackable, for sure. I can connect a little circuit that simulates pressing the buttons. I can connect a circuit that simulates the turning of the the dial that sets the intensity. Yeah, it's hackable. But Sonia, are you disappointed in this that you had to go kind of this? This pulsing route? Ah, a bit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's why uh, I think I can work with this. I can work. Oof. This one. But, I mean, will this also mm. cause you any heart or cell damage? I, um, I have been in... Uh, oof. I have been in contact with uh, some professionals about it, and they just said, don't put it on the heart. I mean, what I'm having here right now, if I put just 20 minutes of this on my heart, the heart is a very important muscle, so then it can, uh, can be not dangerous, but you know, I mean, it can be dangerous, but also depends from my own state, physical state, mm. right? But uh, with this is just, uh, you know, for me, I want to detach right now. You ask, are you disappointed? Of course, a bit. Because, but not because I accept a huge compromise, but uh, because I like to build sensors which are usable for what I want to say. And usually I work like this. Uh, this time uh, we take something and we hack. But for me, if we have to dedicate time, I prefer now that I can build really the emotion as you felt. So in, this device can provide that. Now it's important to understand how to build, how to interface it. If I interface it well, the result is the most important. Have you guys had any other obstacles or issues since the last time I talked to you? Mm, no, the most difficult was this interface since yeah, the beginning. Yeah. <laughs> are, you, are you guys working together well still? Oh yeah, and we're having fun. Yeah, 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 yeah. She makes me pasta every once in a while and I'm happy. But <laughs> proper pasta. Uh, proper pasta. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we, we, we had looked into several different ideas of how to make the interface on her body. And we had three ideas that we spent a week or more than a week researching and trying out and it didn't work and it was too complicated or too expensive or just too dangerous. Too expensive, I never said. No, 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 but that was sort of my conclusion that if we had to buy a, a 6,000 euro power supply that was probably not going to be a good idea. Also, that was a really dangerous high yeah. voltage thing. And how's the rest of the installation coming? Uh, it's done. We have uh, we have the light interface. We have the infrared working well. So now there is a development from my old piece. The interface is quite uh, developed. Now there is a division between upper and lower body. The, we have a bigger range of sensors, uh, but we have still to tune it because for me it's too sensitive still. Now the interface is going to be closed in in a cube, right? So we have to think about how she feels in there, because she's going to be in the dark, closed. That's another threshold, the human threshold that we have to explore. And, um, and it's going to be very hot in there, so the system needs to be still tuned. And will you have the same uh, model in there the whole time?
whole time or will you have one different one depending on I where think you're... this one cannot be performed every like uh, every hour and uh, with the pose. I think this one is uh, three hours in a day but with the long uh, because I think for uh, physically I mean this device is uh, has a 15 minutes time then it switch off because so actually uh, one hour of electric pulse it's a lot and I want to go over that uh, uh, to be still in a warm place uh, being the human antenna for one hour it's already a lot so we see that's the rehearsal I'm really waiting for because that's where I can really start to the first thing I do that I, when I go in Venice I will paint her because she's gonna have some paint on the body and uh, I will put a little lamp so I know how illuminate the body and that's where we start the real rehearsal about skin right yeah and the sound uh, of course is a part of uh, of it I mean maybe it's, it's not the main part but of course is an experience we deliver inside the ambisonic cabin so yeah, we, we will see. I'm very curious also, actually. We will see. I think it's going to be nice. And if it's not nice, uh, uh, it was an experiment. It was an experiment. The idea, I still like it. I think it's a nice idea. And uh, it has a lot of uh, meaning of discussion. Because was, what I find nice in this project already now that, uh, you know, we are in the messy moment of just stress building. Uh, every time I speak about this uh, idea or people ask me about this idea, there is always a lot to talk about. And that's a nice, I mean, it's a nice point for a piece. Yeah. So that's something that makes me happy. Basta. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's funny, this whole uh, intervention from Stein's behalf to make sure you're protected. That's something I never would have Me even too. considered. Me too. That, would, that it would have helped. Me too. I never, I never thought about. I never, I never, I didn't expect actually. But uh, it happened and it was fine. I mean, it's a... Uh, you know, at one moment I I had uh, I I was very concerned as time will uh, redraw, saying uh, we don't want to. So I was very happy when Tago said we want to support your project. So this I was uh, yeah very happy, and of course I understand, and uh, we we found I think uh, a good. I mean I feel fine with. Uh, Independent from this, I feel fine with the, the space we met, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Also because time-wise, we don't have time to build uh, the circuit. But how did stop? Did you spend a lot of time in or in the other circuit? Mm, no, not so much time. I was just thinking about how it should be done, and uh, I spent two evenings at home doing some research. But that's not really an issue. I bought parts already. I bought components already, but that's also not. Not a, a large fortune spent on stuff we will never use. Wouldn't be the first uh, time that happens. But um, no, I'm happy with this with this device. I think we can achieve what we want to from it. Um, the th one um, disappointment is that um, we wanted originally to be able to synchronize the electric pulses with the rhythm of the lights in the room and, and associate with the sound. So it would all be sort of a, a whole, and this device makes up its own rhythms as it goes along, and we can't really control the so speed of it we directly. To, because the lights are really miming the sensuality inside the cube. So if you look at the lights, now that we know, uh, we understand what is happening inside. And of course, then people will refer to that sensuality what I'm having on my body. But I don't redraw this idea. That's why we are here trying to now figure it out, which is the best pattern. For the difference. And we yeah. have a time to play with. 
we have frequency to play with i mean you know we can go maybe the worst is going to be that i am not in sync with the light but just uh, it's not about the piece itself it's a, for my own condition because the light are quite uh, can be quite strobo and if you have electric pulses not so sync with the strobo light then maybe <laughs> Yeah. It's yeah. going to be, there is going to be a fading moment, but <laughs> we'll see. I am ready for it. <laughs> That's it. It's exciting. Yeah. yeah. So now we're trying out all the different combinations of things we can do with this device. And at the same time, I'm looking into how the, the interfacing goes, because I can take this little computer board that simulates the pressing of various buttons but we need to get a signal back to the computer board that says somehow that either the device is still doing is still running and that it knows that the certain button was pressed you know but it has these little blinking leds board it shouldn't be too difficult Very genius. well yeah sometimes <laughs> not always but sometimes i have i have my moments <laughs> And so, how many, how many more months are you going to work on this? Uh, for the hardware, we have uh, two weeks. Yeah, we have two weeks. That's why for we have the to hardware. Hurry. And uh, then uh, in Venice, I'm going to have a three months residency. So I have all the time to set up the space. Uh, then there is the sound the composition that still uh, is. Uh, we just, I just bought. Uh, I still to buy the speakers. Uh, uh, amplifiers I mean there is a lot to do still but uh, you know this is the hardest part we are building the violin eh? then we start to rehearse yeah thanks guys thank you and